Big thanks to Kinster for sponsoring today's video. It's epic WordPress hosting on the fastest Google Cloud servers with global CDN edge caching, auto database optimization, rock solid security, and 24 seven human support. Try it free for a month at jackson.co forward slash Kinster. Greetings WordPressers, Jackson here. Welcome to the channel. Nice to have you as always. So almost exactly a year ago, I presented to you my approach for solving the shortcomings for WordPress block theming, well, lack of responsive controls within the block editor. It was supposed to be, you know, on the roadmap. It still hasn't happened. This year was blown to shreds. We don't even know if we're getting a release, let alone whether it's going to include responsive. Anyway, that video was pretty cool. It showed you how to add your own class system to overcome the sort of lack of responsive controls. And it works really well. I've been using that kind of approach for a couple of years now at minimum. And yeah, it's second nature for me to actually utilize it. But anyway, in that I showed you how to add these classes and then the CSS, etc., to this little box here called the additional CSS classes box in the block editor. Every block has one, which means you can target any type of block, including containers and text and everything basically. But I always thought in that little box there, wouldn't it be super cool if you could sort of start typing and it would pop up a list of classes for you to choose from? And well, guess what? <laughs> That actually exists. And I've just, well, I found out about it about a month ago and it is absolutely phenomenal. Eddie Amin, thank you. You are a legend. This is exactly what I was, I mean, when I say exactly, this is exactly what we needed. And it makes your workflow and CSS and responsive classes or any classes adding an absolute breeze. So in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the plugin, like the default settings and stuff like that, show you how it works. And also the major bonus is that I've made a brand new plugin because in that video from last year, I had a plugin where you could use all the CSS that I created for the spacing and stuff like that. But I've made a brand new one with tons more CSS classes that do a ton more stuff. It's a free plugin. Link is in the description. Go and grab it off my freebies page. So in this tutorial, let's go. It's WordPress Responsive Design for Block Theming 2025. Right then, got a fairly fresh install of WordPress, just a homepage with some content on it and another page. Let's head over to the back end. We've got the WordPress, my WordPress starter theme, version two, block starter theme, blank block starter theme, super lightweight theme, free download, link is in the description. Go over to our plugins. We've got this CSS class manager and let's have a look at the details. Eddie, you are a certified legend. Mr. Amin, this is beyond useful. Thank you so very much. Let's go and see it in action. Well, actually, let's see it not in action because I'm going to leave it off for a minute just so I can quickly show you what it looks like from default. So we've got a page here. Let's go to that headline. Under the advanced tab, you see we've got additional CSS classes here. That's what I've been using for years to just make block theming work. Let's get the plugin switched on and activated. Back to our page, refresh. And let's get that headline up again. And let's open up this tab. And you see that there's a, there's a slight difference here. The text has changed. There's a link and we're asked to select classes. Well, we haven't made any yet, but you can just start typing them in. Say we want sort of col red, color red, hit return. We've got a class. Now what this has done, it's actually sort of saved it as a preference somewhere. So if we went to another block, say this paragraph block, now you see we've got the option to choose our class that we just created. So we choose that. So let's have a look at this link, open the class manager. So here's our, all our classes. Well, there's only one at the moment, but you see how easy it is to sort of quickly build out your classes. Oh, there's a fantastic little addition here. Thanks to whoever suggested that in the support forum on .org. Cause that, see that, what that does, it pops it up into its own little tab rather than you having to open the tab and scroll to it kind of thing, which means you can get to it really fast when you are doing a lot of editing and just need to add some classes quickly and it really is super easy to add them so we go this that and then when we go to a block we can see them from the list but also you can start typing ahead and it will just pick out the ones that's in 
your class list. It's absolutely genius. But of course, there is no CSS at the moment. These are just classes. So what you have to do is then let's get our col red. Go to our code editor. Now you can add these with a CSS code snippet plugin. Not my favorite choice. In a child theme, if you're using a parent theme or if you're using a custom theme or a starter theme like I'm doing, then you can just stick them in your CSS because it's all lovely and cute anyway. So let's add our CSS to our style sheet. Uh, custom and so dot col red is color red let's get back to the admin make sure we've saved our new classes get over to our front and refresh that there we go we've got our red and if, actually if we refresh the admin as well you'll see that that's pulled it into the admin editor as well so all good and if we then we can go and turn it on turn it off to our heart's content isn't that super cool so you can see how quickly you can build out a full CSS style sheet for your particular project. But remember, this was about, in the most cases that I use additional CSS is to help with the responsive things. So if you remember from that last video from August, I was talking about just putting my own class in there and adding it to your CSS or adding it to a plugin or what have you. So as I mentioned, I've created a brand new plugin that inc includes a ton of new spacing and sizing options if i just switch tabs on the code editor you see this is the plugin here in fact let's go and do a find for it here and get it so my css framework there so if we go back to the plugin so i've got this plugin open in the code editor if we have a look at the css i mean you can see that there's i mean it's not minified but it's uh, quite a lot of quite a lot of css but font sizes overflows different sizes for different devices we've got vertical horizontal tabs individual tabs left and right and all that sort of stuff gaps on mobile tablet etc height that's going to show you that working in just a second swap rows so we can swap flex directions on on a flex display lots of helper stuff display none on tablet display none on mobile show and hide on the same i mean it's 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 endless but this is this is kind of like my sort of finished ish version of what I think I need when I'm starting every project. And for all you page speed insight junkies out there, yes, we will be showing you how to remove unwanted CSS in due course. Hold tight for that. Right, let's get let's see this in action. So I'm back to my page here. I'm going to refresh that. Oh, actually, let's just take off our red. So in fact, let's take off all of it. Save that. And I'm going to refresh this page. Uh, if we go to our Class manager now, you will see that oh, did we oh we haven't activated the plugin. Let's activate the plugin. Refresh that again. Back to our open class manager. And there's all our classes. Hundreds of them. I can't remember how many there is. I think there's 660 or something as it stands at the moment. But we don't have to memorize them because we can just use our sort of common sense and general CSS class attributes name. So let's have a look at this. Refresh that. If we go to mobile view, we'll go to tablet first of all. I'm going to get my responsive set to iPad. So there's an iPad. Now on, I'm going to flick between desktop and iPad. So that looks okay. Maybe on iPad, you know, on, on tablet, maybe the space is a little bit too much. So we whiz over to our admin, find our space. And on here we go height, tab, uh, let's just zero it. So the height on the tab is zero. Now it's just, it's doing that because basically my screen is too small for the recording. So if we save that, you'll see that now our space is gone. So you can see how very quickly you can go, oh, that's a bit weird. Let's make it different on tablet or mobile and it will cascade down to the mobile view, which is something like that. So that's cool. Now something that I tend to do when I've got this sort of like, you know, this sort of left, right thing. It looks great when you're on a desktop, makes sense. But when you go to something like a mobile, where it all goes into one column, you see how the image, because it's on the right, it falls underneath. That's the way the columns are collapsing, which is totally correct. But it does make it a bit confusing. So what we want to do on here is swap those columns over. And we do that by finding our column, which is our second set, which is that one. And on that one, it's obviously we've got two columns inside it. On here, we'll have swap, swap calls on mob. Okay, save that. Back to our front end, refresh. And there we go. We've swapped our columns. 
Another thing we might want to do, which is sometimes, I mean, depends on the design and the content, obviously, is that when we're on mobile, maybe center this, this text here. So let's have a look at that. So on mobile, this text would be, let's use the top one, text center mob. There you go. Same with the text center mob. Same with that. Save that. And there we go. We've got our text center. Now the thing is here, we want that button centered, but the thing is the button, as you will rightly know, is a, it's got a container because it's buttons with button inside it. And it's the container that we need to target. But if we just did, you know, text mob again, it's not going to do anything. We actually need to, we need to target the, the flex box that is actually controlling its positioning. And for that, we're going to use justify center mob. So it's going to justify content center mob. Save that. Let's have a look at our front end now. And there we go there. So there's a few gotchas here and there. But if you're adding CSS and you know a little bit about what you're doing in the sense of you, you've kind of got to know a little bit about what you're doing, all is good. Now, of course, lots of other things you can do, like say, you know, on, you know, font, font, mob, say 18px. I mean, clearly I'm, this is now just for demo purposes. Don't you see that, of course, all our responsiveness is working beautifully, you know, on that image. I've added some some kind of cheeky stuff because again, the image is actually is in a container that you can't see, which is really annoying. But if I type in image, so these are the kind, these are kind of workarounds, if you like. Uh, if we go image width on mobile, 70%, save you see that that's the kind of vibe we're getting, but that's a slight hack because if we look at the code here, look for image, that's where the class is being put. You see that image class there, but we're having to target the image itself. Yes, yes, shouldn't be that way really. But anyway, what else have we got for examples? Of course, you can all do all sorts of things like, you know, add padding and margin on so marge, bottom mob let's give it something ridiculous like 60 save that and you see you've got it's actually got quite a bit of margin on it anyway um and then of course you're not limited to my stuff you can add as, as much as you want i mean clearly the world is your oyster let's have another look at a page a grid is a great example so i've got a, few, a little bit of grid stuff going on so here, here's a grid well we want this to be a manually set let's make it three columns but of course, when you save that and just go and look at the grid, we don't get any responsiveness at all. Now, yeah, you can use the auto, which will collapse them in a fluid way. But let's be honest, nine times out of 10, you want to control when it's going to break. And with default grid, you can't do that. So here we would go on our grid, we would say clear that. And then we can have, you know, grid to call tab. And then we'd have grid one call mob and that's all good save that let's give that a refresh there's our one column and of course it essentially is like any of these css frameworks i mean you could actually put in tailwind css and actually have the classes as the tailwind actual classes if that's your flavor pretty special stuff hey so just a word on the plugin because there is a couple of ways of adding the classes to the site and that is whereby you can, like we've seen, add them to manually to here. But there's a great option where Eddie's given us here, this is the um, the GitHub page, is where you can actually add the classes, the class names that is, with this PHP class here, this filtered class names thing, which means there's they are transportable. That said, you can actually import export, which is wonderful. So the way I've done the plugin, you've seen the, the classes, the zillions of classes. So what it is, is just a simple plugin. It loads the front end CSS, which is that one we were looking at, into the site. And it also loads the CSS into the block editor. Now there is a, there is a thing with this, which is if you are using this plugin, then you've got to change your link here to your own URL of the actual site. There isn't a way around that for loading CSS into the block editor that I know of. And I did research it quite a bit, but if there is, please, please do let me know in the comments below or ping me. But that's the only thing you've got to change with this. And then we go on to that 
PHP code that actually loads the class names that gives you them in the drop down, the ones that you can filter and all that sort of stuff. It did take a little while to get this together, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you appreciate it. But there you go. That's my effort of trying to relieve a little bit of pain when it comes to responsive settings in WordPress block editing. Fab stuff. Link for my free plugin for responsive block theming is in the description, along with info on Eddie's wonderful plugin. And if you want a little bit more block theming action, right there is your next video. But until next time, I shall see you later.